Today we take a closer look at a very special project, the AMG GTXX. The project started back in 2020 with a huge target, in 8 days around the world. That means that AMG wanted to build an electric car which would be able to cover 40,000 kilometers in just 8 days. Background of this was to demonstrate constant high performance with frequent fast charging and a car which can take it. And instead of doing this just for a couple of hours before the car overheats, AMG wanted to show that they can do this for days. And all of this in hot summer conditions. It's a project where AMG engineers were given complete freedom, something which wouldn't be possible at Mercedes and other big brands. And these are exactly the projects which lead to great achievements. So how do you approach such a project? Around the world in this case means equator length, which is 40,075 kilometers. And eight days means 192 hours. So you need an average speed of 209 km per hour to reach the target. If a car is doing more than 40,000 km in one go, you need frequent stops for recharging, driver change, tire change and servicing, which means the car needs to travel at a much higher speed constantly to be able to reach 209 km per hour in average. So AMG set the target speed at 300 km per hour constantly. Because of that high speed, they need a car with low drag and low rolling resistance, but also with enough stability to safely travel that fast for a long time. So tires cannot be too narrow and drag reduction is not enough. The aerodynamic body shouldn't produce too much lift. At the same time, stops should be as short as possible and there's no time for long charging intervals. So that means huge stress for the battery. It is drained at a high rate while driving at 300 km per hour, so it's getting hot. Then they use recuperation to slow the car down, which heats the battery more. And then it is charged extremely fast, which heats the battery again. So in contrast to a combustion engine, charging and discharging heats up the battery, which means you need a superior cooling system. And not just that, because you need maximum performance from each component, you need each component at its perfect temperature, which is not the same for motors and battery. So you also need to manage the different temperature levels within the cooling system. So AMG decided for a battery with direct cell cooling. In other words, each module is flooded with oil. Oil is surrounding the cells and takes all the heat from them, which is much more powerful than a heat plate just underneath the cells like Ferrari and others do it. So it's much easier to get heat out of the battery and to keep each cell at its optimal temperature. The battery then has a big oil water heat exchanger to connect it with the rest of the water cooling system. In terms of motors, AMG uses three axial flux motors from Yaza, which now belongs to Mercedes. They use one motor in front and two at the back. Advantage of these motors is their small size of just one third of a comparable motor. So they're just one third of the weight, but have three times the power density and twice the torque density of a conventional radial electric motor. In total, the drivetrain provides more than 1000 kilowatt and the car is designed for more than 360 km per hour. To cool all this, they installed a large radiator in the front center, which takes the high pressure air from the stagnation point at the front and exits air at the top to reduce lift. At the same time, they can accelerate the air through this channel again and reduce the cooling drag. For the record runs, they installed additional radiators at the side, just in case. So these three inlets can be closed with active aero, to only use them if necessary. In addition to that, they placed a huge cooling plate underneath the front axle. Water is flowing through it and it's constantly in contact with the fast underbody flow and does not increase drag. This allows AMG to keep the front intakes closed for longer, which reduces drag. At the underbody we find another highlight, which is a simple bump in front of the rear axle, to accelerate the flow and locally reduce pressure, hence to produce downforce to counter the lift from above. To further reduce drag, AMG extended diffuser and upper separation line to reduce the weight behind the car. The GTX-X has an extendable spoiler, but they didn't use it for the record runs. And there is another innovation. Plasma-induced air separation. 
So by applying electricity, they can ionize the air and control flow separation. That would allow air to separate on a round surface at the ideal location, for example, and gives more design freedom. So you don't have to have a fixed sharp edge. Overall, the drag coefficient sits at 0.198 for this four-door coupe. And they were also running the car with mirrors and without taping panel gaps, which not every manufacturer would do. Additionally, for such an extreme project, you have to keep in mind that you are designing the car with a projected battery cell design and performance. It is something which doesn't exist when you start and you are counting on having such performance when the car is ready. So it's like shooting on a moving target. So they now have this innovative car capable to do the record runs. And they went to the high speed track in Nardot in May 2025 to prepare. But there are too many variables. For example, if the battery would get a bit warmer than expected, the car would need more cooling during driving, which means opening more air intakes and that would increase drag. With more drag, they would need more power to drive the same speed, which means more heat again, and they would have to recharge earlier, which means more stops and probably not reaching the target. So AMG teamed up with their experts for energy management. Mercedes High Performance Powertrains. The F1 Engine Division. They joined the project on optimized energy management depending on the current status of the car, weather and other boundary conditions. They calculated the optimal number of laps and recharge times. At the end of August 2025, so the hottest time in southern Italy, with more than 35 degree ambient temperature, they started their record run. In the end, they used two cars, which drove independently without giving each other slipstream. They changed tires eight times per day had a mechanical checkup once per day, and they recharged the car within two to three minutes with an average of 850 kilowatt. They used a number of drivers and one of them was George Russell. They drove 5,479 kilometers within the first 24 hours, while the current record was less than 4,000. And they completed the 40,075 kilometers in seven days, 13 hours, 24 minutes and seven seconds. So half a day early. And both cars finished with just one lap difference. It was an amazing achievement. AMG did not just meet their extremely high target, they also proved that with the right cooling technology, electric cars can have a constant high power output, followed by extreme charging speeds at the most extreme conditions. And they did that for days, so their concept is reliable and works. Just two weeks later, the record car was presented at the IAA in Munich and BMW and Mercedes came to AMG to congratulate them for their achievements and thank them to show what is possible if you really want to design something good and give engineers freedom. And even the Xiaomi boss sent his congratulations. So AMG showed with this project what's possible if you are willing to innovate. It's also good news from the German car industry in a long time and very important to push other brands. Because now there is someone who could do this. AMG now has the technology in the shelf. It is proven, they have tons of data and they are planning on bringing this drivetrain and cooling concept to production in 2026. So we can be excited for what's coming, which wasn't always the case in recent years. How do you like the AMG GTXX project? Let me know in the comments below and check out my other videos for more.